Tesla recently announced that the Tesla Model 3 in Europe will come with a CCS charge port. What does that mean for Tesla supercharging and electric cars in general? When the Tesla Model 3 was announced and they had opened up reservations, I was in Yosemite with my family and could not get my hands on a computer to make a reservation. And by the time I could get a signal, the reservation number had climbed to over 100,000 reservations. At that point, I lost all hope and didn't even put in a reservation. And as time got closer and closer to when they were going to start production of the Tesla Model 3, I became more and more convinced that it would take a year, if not two, once it was in production, that I would even get my hands on one. So as we were about six to eight months away from the production of the Tesla Model 3, I began to realize more and more without that reservation, and more and more people were making those reservations, I was easily two to even three years out before I'd even get my hands on a car. And I was sitting in a Nissan Leaf at that point and was really anxious to get into a longer range car. So I started looking at other alternatives and it seemed like the best fit at the time was the Chevy Bolt. So I started going over a pros and cons list. And first and foremost, it was available now at that point. I could have gone onto the lot and purchased a Chevy Bolt right then and there. And on top of that, it had been receiving rave reviews from most of the people putting the reviews out. They had reported rave reviews about its overall performance, the functionality, and the range, of course, not that bad either, over 230 miles per charge. But let's be honest, the Chevy Bolt is not exactly the prettiest car out there, especially when you stack it up against a Tesla Model 3. But I was able to overlook that because I was anxious to get behind the wheel of a longer range car. And the Chevy Bolt with its 230 mile plus range was pretty impressive to me at that time. But upon looking at the cons, it was one con in particular that pushed me over the edge and that was the lack of charging stations across the nation. Now the overall objective for a lot of people who drive electric cars is to reduce their carbon footprint and to be greener in general. But especially even just a few years ago, it just wasn't practical to have an electric car because it couldn't go the long distances that you wanted to. That is unless of course you had about $100,000 to spare for a Tesla Model S or an eventually a Tesla Model X. Now, I don't plan on traveling from coast to coast anytime soon, if ever, but I do know this, that I do want a car that's capable of doing that if need be. And the Tesla Model 3 fit that bill, even the short range and the mid range at that. And the Chevy Bolt fit that bill as well. But again, that was looking outside of the charging network. The Tesla supercharger network allows you to do that. But the charging network, at least at the time when I was looking at the Chevy Bolt, wasn't capable of doing that. But it seems like even in the last six to 12 months that we have seen an expansion of the charging network outside of Tesla. However, it still seems it's not where it needs to be just yet, but it's getting closer. So let's take a look at all the different chargers that are out there. Again, outside, we'll start off outside of the Tesla network. And when we look at the US Department of Energy Alternative Fuels Data Center, they've got a great tool in there where you can look at level one, level two, Chatamo, and even CCS fast charging. You can put them all on together or you can separate them. So a couple of things that I noticed when looking at the Chatamo and the CCS charging network, that there seems to be a big cluster on both side of the nation, both sides of the nation, that is the West and the East Coast. And then you just have a few spats here and there in the mid sections of the country. So there are a lot of gaps, at least within the fast charging network, when you take a look at Chatamo and CCS. Now, when you plug in the level two charging, it's a different story. It looks like it's beginning to fill in between the coast, the West Coast, again, 
a big cluster of charging stations. And this is level two, by the way, so it's going to be a much slower charge. And then on the East Coast, again, you can see a big cluster there. And it looks like the East Coast is kind of spreading westward. And you have a bit more charging stations there. And again, when you put the Chatamo and the CCS in there, again, we're just still seeing a lot of gaps in there, making it more difficult for you to get across the nation if that's something you need to do outside of Tesla. And speaking of Tesla, when you look at their map, it's a completely different story. And this is coming from the U.S., still look coming from the U.S. Department of Energy Alternative Fuels Data Center. And when you look at the map, you can see a couple of clusters there on both the West and East Coast and in some of the larger city areas as well. Of course, the Bay Area, Southern California, that's to be expected as well, right? But you can see even in parts of the East Coast, you've got some clusters. But when you look at in between the East and West Coast, you've got a nice flow of charge chargers, a great network for you to go from coast to coast if need be. Now, there is one area that you can kind of take a look at in particular that just kind of stands out, right, is that's, it, that's the north central U.S. In particular, uh, northern portions of South Dakota, all of North Dakota, and northeastern portions of Montana just don't have any chargers there, at least superchargers for now. And I don't know if there are any people who live out there, if there have been any problems traveling in that part of the nation as far as Teslas are concerned. But when you look at the overall expansion over the U.S., it's a phenomenal charging network and it's only getting larger. So now we take you to the Tesla website and on their supercharging page to show you not only the current superchargers, but the future superchargers as well. And you can see that that fills in that gap I was talking about through northeastern Montana, through North Dakota. You've got, you've got quite a network that's expected to be built in there. And when you kind of click on some of those, you can kind of get a projected date and when they're going up. Target opening in 2018 in Mile City, in Bismarck. It looks like that's coming up in 2018. Now, here's the thing. We all know that Elon Musk is not so great at uh, predicting dates when it comes to anything regarding Tesla. So, obviously, we're nearing the end of 2018 and still no word on some of these that are expected to go up. But, you know, he did make an announcement, it seems like a few months ago, saying that the number of charging stations was going to uh, be a lot larger than what we're looking at right now. And that certainly is some promising news. To be fair, I think it's worth mentioning that there is an organization called Electrify America. And I'll post their website at the bottom or below this video. And they have an investment cycle planning overview, which in a nutshell is over a 10-year period ending in 2027. They will invest $2 billion in the zero emission vehicle infrastructure. So that is really good news. And part of their plan, once all is said and done, is that between charging stations, it will only be about a 70-mile gap at most. Per charging station, there will be 4 to 10 chargers with charging power levels up to 350 kilowatts. And their plan is to be able to go from coast to coast without any problems. But looking at their map, this is kind of interesting and something to take note. What we're seeing now is that it looks like the north central United States once again is being ignored in this plan. However, once again, overall, things are definitely looking, definitely looking better for the charging network outside of Tesla. So what's the point that I'm trying to make here? The point is this, is that it seemed like it was less than a year ago that really a really big deal breaker for me when it came to the Chevy Bolt was the lack of the charging network and how unreliable it was and that the Tesla supercharging network had a phenomenal already at that time and it's only expanding and getting better. But it seems like in that time since I've made that decision that the network outside of Tesla has expanded. Has the reliability gotten better? I can't speak from that from experience, but again, based on what I'm seeing, there still seems to be uh, some bugs, some glitches within the network outside of Tesla. But here's the thing, and we talk about the fact, and of course I talked about this earlier, was that, that Tesla just a few days ago announced that the Model 3 in Europe 
is going to come with a CCS charge port. Again, I mentioned that earlier. And what they're doing with their supercharger network is they're going to be outfitting them with the CCS chargers as well. So that the Model S and the Model X will be using the original charger and the Model 3, the new ones coming out the line for Europe, will be using the new CCS combo charge port. And of course, you can see those in the pictures there. So that, of course, then begs the question, what does that mean for America and really North America in general? Many people are speculating that eventually Tesla is going to roll out the Model 3 and really all of their cars, including the Y, the truck, uh, you know, they're ta of course talking about the truck with the CCS charge port as well. And would that mean that they're going to have to outfit all of those? Are they going to have to do what they're doing in Europe and have two separate cables, depending on which charge port you have? Who knows? Nobody really knows at this point what that means. But here's kind of a theory that I have, is that this is going to be a game changer if indeed Tesla decides to do this in North America as well. Because most cars outside of Tesla are going to have the CCS charge port, the quick charge port. And that means that since Tesla is going to most likely have a very reliable already network, that means that they are going that other companies are going to want to make very reliable charging network as well, and that would fill in the gaps. And that would most likely mean that when people are weighing the pros and cons between a Tesla and a car outside of Tesla, that the charging network may not even be a part of that decision, as opposed to the decision I made just six to even eight months ago. So as always, I am curious to know what you all think. Number one, what do you think of this move from Tesla to put the CCS charge port in the Model 3 in Europe? Is that something you'd like to see here in North America? Or would you like to keep it the way it is? And I'm also curious to know if there's anybody watching this who has a longer range electric vehicle outside of Tesla and uses the charging network. Help debunk what my theory is on how unreliable it is and how there are a lot of gaps in there and how it is difficult to drive across the nation if you wanted to on the charging network outside of Tesla. Again, if you have been able to do it successfully, let me know and let me know if it was a big challenge for you or not. Again, debunk anything that I may have said. And if you have a Tesla, what do you think of the supercharging network? Is it as reliable as I say it is, or does it have its problems as well? I can tell you from my experience, having driven from California to Central Texas, I did not have one problem with the superchargers. Well, that's it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see future videos, you can subscribe to my channel as well. And as always, if you know of anybody or you yourself are planning on buying a Tesla, you can use my referral code to get six months of free charging. I'll, of course, be sure to provide that link below this video. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. And until my next video, stay positively charged.